Hello, welcome back to this week's market update. Today is Monday, September 23rd, 2024, and we had a very important week full of news from the Federal Reserve, so we will jump right in. Taking a quick look at market performance from last week, a lot of it was driven by the Fed, with stocks hitting all-time highs on Thursday following the 50 basis point rate cut, which was greater than what the market was expecting. Here you can see the Nasdaq Composite ended 2% higher on the week, the S&P 500 up 1.2% higher on the week, the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 1% on the week, and then the Barclays Aggregate Bond Index down just about half a percentage point on the week. Heading into our market news, the Federal Reserve cut the Fed funds rate for the first time in over four years last Wednesday, slashing it by a full 50 basis points there, which is greater than the widely expected 25 basis points that markets were fully pricing in going into the meeting. It's also the first change in the policy rate since the last rate hike in July of 2023. So really a big deal and many market participants were not expecting this full 50 basis point rate cut. So a big deal for the Fed, a big deal for many other industries, especially banking, anyone trying to take out a loan, those debt heavy industries, many, many implications of this rate cut. And in the press conference, Fed Chair Jerome Powell continued to emphasize that the decision was a precautionary measure aimed at guarding against an economic downturn rather than an aggressive attempt to rescue the economy. So going into the meeting, there was a lot of concerns that if the Fed was going to do a larger rate cut, it would be a sign of economic weakness. But in the press conference last Wednesday, Fed Chair Jerome Powell really emphasized that this was a precautionary measure and not a sign of economic weakness. So with that, we will jump right into the next slide where we have our quarterly summary of economic projections from the Fed. In addition to the meeting and rate cut last week, the Fed also released their quarterly summary of economic projections or SEP for short, which shows the Fed members predictions for things like GDP, unemployment, inflation, as well as the federal funds rate, which is the only one of these factors that they can directly control. So you can see that the GDP projections did not change too much. The 2024 one did get revised down slightly from June's SEP. The unemployment rate, though, did get revised up quite a bit from 4 to 4.4 to end the year 2024. PCE inflation, though, did get revised down for the year-end projection at 2.3%, and the same trend for core PCE inflation. So that's good news there. The Fed thinks inflation will come down faster than it did in the June projection. And then last but not least, as I said, the most important piece, the last, the only thing that the Fed can directly control, the federal funds rate. Now they project it to end the year around 4.4%, which would mean 100 basis points of rate cuts. So we already had 50 basis points, leaving two more 25 basis point rate cuts or one more 50 basis point rate cut for the year end between the two Fed meetings remaining for 2024. So overall, this is really big news here. The Fed definitely sees a lot more uh, aggressive rate cuts than they did in June, bringing the projected federal funds rate down to 4.4% by year end. Shifting gears from the Fed last week, we also got the August retail sales figures showing retail sales up 0.1%, mostly driven by a total retail sales figure and not general merchandise here. You can see auto was generally flat in the month of August, but it was much better than the expectations of a 0.2% decline in the month. Year over year, though, when we look at that figure, retail sales were up only 2.1%. When you subtract out the inflation rate in August, the 2.5% CPI, that brings you to a real decline compared to a year ago of 0.4% from August of 2023. So overall, we did get better than expected retail sales for August. However, it does show a real inflation adjusted decline compared to a year ago. We also got the leading economic index from the conference board last week as well, showing it declining by 0.2% in the month of August here, mostly led by a weaker 
yield spread here. So you can see the 10 year minus the Fed funds rate. And this is as of August. So it doesn't quite price in the change of last week's Fed rate cut. That was a major contributor to the drop in August, as well as the ISM index of new orders, which was down to 0.23% in the month. On the other hand, we saw positive contributions from building permits and private housing, as well as the leading credit index here and the average weekly hours in manufacturing. So overall, the LEI continues to be negative, although it is less negative than it was a year ago, which is overall a positive sign, but still a bearish indicator on the whole. Last but not least, we also got existing home sales for August as well, showing home sales coming in at 3.86 million in the month of August. This was down at 2.5% in the month following a brief uptick in July. And on a year over year basis, this was down 4.2% in August as well. Inventory ticked up from 3.3 months worth of inventory on the market to 4.2 months. So it's starting to be more of a buyer's market, although higher interest rates and higher prices continue to put pressure on buyers. And last but not least here, we have the median sales price come in at 416700 which showed an increase of 3.1% from a year ago, which is much more in line of a historically normal inflation rate for existing homes. So although the Fed has started to cut rates, these actions certainly take time to filter through the economy, meaning that the real estate market may not get the full impact of those rate cuts that we had last week for a little Bit. And mortgage rates have already been pricing in a lot of the expectations of lower rates. So it'll be really interesting to see how quickly and how much the real estate market reacts to these changes in monetary policy. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's market update, and we look forward to seeing you again next week.